there. Throughout stock market history, there have always been crashes and corrections, and there always will be. What's more, it's at precisely those times of extreme market turbulence that investors tend to make their biggest mistakes. Here's the investment author, Lars Croyer. So how should you react? I always say, well, a lot of that is about looking inward. What is your risk tolerance? Do you, has anything changed in terms of your knowledge about the markets and your ability to outperform the markets? In overwhelming likelihood is no. Whatever, whether it's now March 2009 and you've lost half your money, you still can't outperform the markets. You still can't know what's going to happen 12 months hence. But that doesn't mean that the decline hasn't altered your circumstances. It might paradoxically be that as a result of a great loss, you have a lesser tolerance for risk. That's a personal thing and you should treat it as that. The problem is that human beings are hardwired to react to recent events. The bigger the event, the more likely we are to react. People have very short memories in financial markets and people forget that you know, even if you look at financial markets over the past several hundred years, we will now look at the markets that were successful. There's selection bias. Once every so often there will be a huge calamity. How bad was 2008 really? Well, pretty bad, right? A lot of really awful things happened at the same time. But the banking system didn't collapse. No governments went bankrupt. The fact is, we can't predict the future. And investors should be prepared for a severe market downturn at any time. The best way to do it is to diversify. Should you have gold bars in your vault somewhere that you're going to go pick up? And in the case where that was actually a real store of value, would you actually want to wander the streets with these gold bars? Should you have bought a gold ETF? Well, I don't know, in a complete calamity, you probably couldn't transact any of those things. So there are no good answers. But again, if you had the most broadly diversified set of stocks, there's some chance that some sector in some geography somewhere would have done just okay. So there probably would have been some value there. That's it. Thanks for watching.